Today's paper is Spatial Pyramid Pooling in Deep Convolutional Networks for Visual Recognition. The paper tackles classification and object detection, but in this video we'll just review object detection. The proposed model is agnostic of the input image size. When this paper was proposed, it was difficult to restrict input image to the object detector because of the fully connected layer. If you think of it, convolutions produce output feature maps of different sizes depending on the input image resolution, but fully connected layer requires input dimension to be fixed. Therefore, input image size had to be fixed to use fully connected layers. The authors overcome this problem by introducing a new layer called spatial pyramid pooling. The proposed method is faster compared to RCN and object detector, where cropping and warping operation is performed in an image level. Now, the figure in the left shows the proposed spatial pyramid pooling layer. At the end of the convolutional layer, the network produces a spatial feature map. On this feature map, the spatial pyramid pooling layer is applied. The proposed method follows a bag of words approach, where number of bins are predefined, and using the pooling operation, varying window and stride sizes are used to produce the fixed size feature output. For example, let's assume that we get a feature map of size 13 by 13 and we want to map this feature into 4x4 bin. We can calculate the size of the pooling window to be the ceiling of input feature size over target bin size, which results to 5. And we can calculate the stride value to be the floor of input feature size over target bin size, in this case, 4. If input feature size becomes larger, the window and stride size will be increased accordingly. In the actual model, four bins are defined. These are 6x6, 3x3, 2x2, and 1x1. The extracted feature in each bin are flattened and concatenated together to be fed as an input to the fully connected layer. Now, let's look into this spatial pyramid pooling layer in object detection. Typically, in the RCNN paper, Selective search was used to find region proposals, and convolution operation was applied on each region. This, however, is very slow because convolutions had to be applied to almost 2,000 proposals. Instead of applying convolution in each proposed regions, the authors of the paper proposed to operate convolution only once and apply spatial pyramid pooling on mapped region proposals area in the feature dimension. Again, the selective search algorithm is applied in the input image, and given the region proposals, we calculate which area in the feature dimension corresponds to the proposed region. We then apply spatial pyramid pooling in the feature dimension to produce a fixed number of output, regardless of the box size of the region proposal. The bottom figure shows the difference of pipeline between the old method and the newly proposed method. On the top, we see that the crop and warp operation is applied in the image level and conv layer is applied at each region proposals. While at the bottom, we see that convolution operation is just applied once and spatial pyramid pooling is used to generate fixed number of feature outputs. Now, this table shows the results of the SPP model on Pascal VOC 2007 dataset. Compared to RCNN model, the SPP is 64 times faster. The performance as well on single scale is 43%, which is comparable to the RCNN model. As the fully connected layer is fine-tuned, the performance goes up to 58%. And when using five different scales, the performance once again goes up to 59.2. Table 10 on the right is the comparison of RCNN using the same pre-trained model of SPP-NET background. 
While the speed is a bit slower, we get higher results when we replace AlexNet to the SPP network. Now, this table shows the performance of the model on Pascal VOC 2007 classes. Most of the best scores are achieved by the SPP net, and this is shown in the last row. Also, second from the last row is the replaced RCN and AlexNet backbone with the one used in the SPP net. And we can see that this model quite works well in many categories. Finally, the image shows the qualitative results from the SPP model. Link to the paper and some useful resources will be provided in the description. That's all for today and I'll see you next time with a new paper.